Graca Moraes Contemporary Art Center Graca Moraes Exhibition, Rituals of Silence, Technical Acknowledgements This visit was created within the project Culture for All Braganza, funded by the European Social Fund, Reference Norte 07-4230-000058 of the Municipality of Braganza. It was conducted by the Polytechnic Institute of Braganza. The texts were based on a visit with Graca Murray and Joanna Bayo. Instructions We will start this audio described visit to the exhibition that is a retrospective to the art of Grupo Puzzle and curated by Paula Pinto. This recording includes audio description which is a feature intended for people with visual impairment. However, it also offers relevant information for other visitors that can make it easier to read and to access contemporary art. This visit includes the description of the space, the description of the works and the reading of the texts that are included in the exhibition. The dimensions of the works and spaces are indicated wherever possible, with the width being mentioned first followed by the length. The description will be clockwise, i.e. from left to right. The spatial orientations given are based on the military model of the clock hands, that is, 12, in front of you, 3, on your right side 6, behind you, and 9, on your left side and intermediate locations. These indications consider that the starting point of the visitors is the center of each room, where they are. Visitors should take into account that any movements around the room will have implications for these guidelines and thus should make the necessary adaptation. Graca Moraes Contemporary Art Center The building where Graca Moraes Contemporary Art Center is located was built in the 18th century by Francisco Xavier da Vega Cabral, governor of arms of the province of Trezos Montes. Later it was bought by José Sá Vargas and became known as the Vargas Manor, having the architecture of a small palace. In 1936 the building was donated to the Holy House of Mercy and in 1940, bought by Bank of Portugal which operated in these facilities until 1993. In 2001 it was purchased by the Bragancas City Council. A year later, the City Council applied to the Interg 3 program, the so-called Transmuseums project. The project enabled remodeling the manor to become the Contemporary Art Center, designed by the architect Eduardo Sutomura. June 30, 2008 marks the official inauguration of the Graca Moraes Contemporary Art Center, which honors the artist from Trezos Montes. Room 1 We are in the first room of the exhibition. It has no windows and is lit only by artificial light. In this room, at 1 o'clock, we have the wall text about the exhibition. Let's read it. For Graca Moraes, the studio is a place of shelter. It is in her studio that the artist paints and draws, and it is also in this space that she dedicates herself to reading, opening herself to reflection on her life, her work, on everything that surrounds her. In that silent place, where space and time are right, these are her words, the painter connects with the world and the beings that inhabit it. Resulting from an immersion in Graca Murray's studios, this exhibition brings together works that revisit themes that are fundamental in her work, linked to the vindication of her origins, the village, the rough mountain landscape full of contrasts, the rural world marked by natural cycles and by the rhythm of practices and rituals resulting from the close coexistence between humankind and nature. Besides the drawings and paintings, several of which knew, others kept for a very long time, there are also, for the first time, remarkable photographic series taken by the painter, which allow us to glimpse other sides of her creative process, of her sensitivity in approaching and interpreting the world around her. More than a mere record, the photographs give Graca Murray room for narrative and compositional invention, allowing each painting to develop in unexpected ways. The exhibition is introduced by older works in which some of the topics and pictorial vocabulary that Graca Murray constantly revisits can be identified. The hunt, the fruits, the land, the people. Works from various chronologies reveal the artist's continuous reinvention, highlighting the masterful capture of rituals, gestures and moments that take place without words. 
replaced by the power of forms, of complicit looks, of ancestral wisdoms. In a silence that, more than the absence of noise, is a condition for contemplation and the creation of identities. That is the silence we evoke in these rooms. A silence that is, literally slash soundly and metaphorically, an effective element of communication. A silence that calls for reflection and that does not hide, on the contrary, it emphasizes everything that Graca Moraes' paintings have to tell us. Curatorship. Joanna Bayo Production, Municipality of Braganza slash Graca Moraes Contemporary Art Center. Graca Moraes is a painter, but the basis of her painting is always drawing. According to Joanna Bayo, Graca draws with great talent and mastery. This room shows us the beginning of Graca Moraes' drawing process. This room features four paintings. Two are on the left side of the room and the other two, side by side, on the wall to our right, at three o'clock. The painting at eleven o'clock is a vertical painting measuring 1.20 meters by 1 m. It has a light wood frame and glass. It's called Aunt Amelia and it's from 1979. It is a black and white drawing of a woman, whose name is Aunt Amelia. It was painted with charcoal and pastel. The drawing of half of the woman's body is facing us and occupies the lower half of the left side of the piece. The woman has an aged face, with a closed expression. She has her hair tied and covered with a scarf. She is wrapped in a black shawl, which she weaves across her chest. Around the woman we see several colorful drawings that represent what appears to be a wall behind Aunt Amelia and, above her, various fruits, pears, cherries, chestnuts and pomegranates. Let's take three steps forward and cross the passage to room two. Room two in addition to artificial light, this second room has natural light that enters through the two open windows on the right side. The windows have white blinds that allow you to see the center's inner garden. This room shows the theme of hunting, which is related to the origins of Graca Marais. Graca's father and one of her brothers were hunters. Therefore, hunting is an activity that she has observed since she was little, a common activity in Trezos Montes villages. However, the hunt appears here depicted in a very idealized manner. The pictures about hunting were taken from books about hunting lessons. Graca draws the arrows, the direction of the wind, the direction of the bullets, among other elements. It is a hunt where the relationship between man and animal is perfect and not one of violence. This room has 16 works, two larger pieces, others smaller and a series of eight drawings called The Hunter from 1979. The piece at 2 o'clock is called Hunting Lesson 2 from 1979. It is an oil on canvas that is horizontal and measures 60 centimeters by 1.5 meters. The painting presents three elements against a clear blue sky and a yellowish field, a dog, a man and an animal limb. In the center of the painting, there is a hunting dog standing in profile facing our right. It has black spots on its body black ears and a straight tail. The right paw is in the air, bent, as usual in pointer dogs. On the right side of the canvas there is a man also in profile, facing our left. His body is large compared to his small head. He wears a kind of overalls with a white shirt. In his left arm he holds a stick and in his right arm a protection that covers his arm up to the elbow. It is an object used in training hunting dogs. On the left side of the canvas, an animal limb appears to be emerging from the ground. You can see the bones, tendons and muscles. Let's take four steps forward and cross the passage to room three. Room three, this room is slightly larger than the others. It has two windows, with whitish blinds. These windows allow you to see the center's inner garden and other surrounding buildings, namely the white cube-shaped building, which is the main room for visiting exhibitions at this center. The theme of this room continues to be hunting and some pieces have images taken from books. A new element is introduced, which are real people. The hunter in the larger painting in this room is no longer an abstract hunter, but Uncle Joao. In this room there are ten works on display, six of which are part of a series. 
At 9 o'clock we have a painting called Partridge 2 from 1978 that measures 1.5 by 1.5. It is oil on canvas painted in shades of blue, green and brown. The entire painting is filled with whitish and blue brush strokes, creating the sensation of water. There are no very definite shapes, but in the center you can see a partridge facing our left, with brown and green feathers. Below it, in the lower right corner, a bluish dog appears to be smelling the partridge. At 12 we have the largest painting called The Hunter from 1982. It is 2.2 meters by 2.5 and is an oil and charcoal painting. This painting represents yet another hunter with his dog in the woods. On the left side of the canvas, there is a man standing on a path, facing us. He wears dark pants and a turtleneck, a coat of a lighter color and a hat on his head. He holds a shotgun in his hands and has a belt with cartridges around his waist. In front of his legs, in the lower left corner, the ghostly drawing of a dog in white lines. Occupying the entire right side of the canvas, a mix of green and white tones that represent leaves and vegetation, and the brown tones of a partridge's feathers. Let's take four steps forward, turn to our left and take about five steps to enter room four. Room four this room is narrower than the previous one. At 12 o'clock, we can see two closed windows with wooden shutters. The theme of this room is pomegranates, which we had already seen in Graca Moraes's first works and in the first room. This was a series that Jonah Bayou and Graca Moraes found in a drawer and that the painter no longer remembered she had. In this room, 24 paintings are displayed in two series of 10 and 14. According to Jonah Bayou, drawing has always been the first expression in which Graca reveals herself the most. She is first and foremost a painter, but the basis of her painting is always drawing. Graca draws masterfully and, in this room, we see that the drawing is still in a very experimental stage. Drawing is not just experimentation, it is linear and perforated drawing. It is an almost academic observational drawing. In the words of Jonah Bayou, the evolution in these pieces is surprising. At the beginning, the drawn fruit was clearly identified. But over the years, the transformation into something more abstract can be seen. Suddenly Graca no longer draws pomegranates. Graca plays with painting. Let's move forward three steps, to the center of the room, turn left, take four steps and enter room five. Room five on our right side, there are two windows with open shutters. Through them, we see Café Chave Dauro and Praka da C. This room focuses on the local tradition of killing the pigs. Graca used to frequently take photographs, and she did so thinking about the composition she would like to create in a painting. According to Jonah Bayou, the killing of the pig was what inspired the title of this exhibition, because it is in fact a ritual. Ritual is a kind of ceremony, a set of practices and customs that are followed for a certain event. Graca says that on the day she took these photos she left the house and didn't hear all the usual commotion around the killing of the pig. When she returned the pig was already dead and they were already cutting it up. She was very surprised that everyone was silent. Everyone participated in the ritual, men and women knew their role, what they were doing and what they had to do. This silence is curious because these days are usually festive days, but on this day everyone was silent. In this room, 24 photographs and two canvases are on display. The old man's painting is a painting on acrylic canvas, vertical, 60 centimeters wide and 40 long. It dates from 2002. Against a black background, a man's face occupies almost the entire canvas, painted in shades of white. He has his head bowed down and his eyes closed. He has a long thin nose and half-open lips. Wrinkles mark his face, with a tired expression. On his head, he has a beret also painted white that hides part of his forehead. At the bottom of the painting, the dark brown sweater that could represent the material, perhaps wool. The piece called Killing is a vertical painting in charcoal and pastel, measuring 1.5 meters by 1 meter. Black, brown and white tones predominate. It has a frame and glass. In the center of the canvas, there is a dead pig on a bench. It's on its back, all open. Its intestines were removed and we see its ribs. We don't see its head. Around the pig, there are four men who clean and prepare the animal for the smokehouse. Let's take four steps, go through the yellow door and enter the penultimate room. Room six this room is slightly larger than the others. To our right there are three windows with yellow wooden shutters that occupy the entire wall. Only the middle window has the shutters slightly open. This room focuses on the women of Viero. In this room, 27 pieces and a large canvas are on display. There are several black and white photographs of women from Viero, and some framed paintings representing these women. 
At 9 o'clock, we have a vertical painting in Indian ink, sepia and acrylic on canvas, measuring 3 meters by 2. It is dated August 28, 2022, which appears painted in red at the bottom of the canvas. The face of an old woman occupies a large part of the canvas, which is painted in very dark tones. She is facing us. She has a thin but aged face, full of wrinkles. She has dark open eyes. She has a high forehead, a long nose and a closed mouth. Her face is painted in shades of light brown and salmon, with her expression lines clearly defined. She has a dark scarf on her head that covers her white hair. Despite this, her hair still shows around her forehead. On the left side of the painting you can see a brown staff that the woman would probably use on her walks. Let's walk forward for seven steps and enter room seven. Room seven this is the last room and, as a rule, it always receives the largest works by Graca Mores. It is a narrower room than the rest. To our right, there are two windows with closed shutters. This room was redesigned for the center's 20th anniversary in June 2023. These paintings by Graca are quite dramatic. She represented everything that was happening around her, such as the war in Ukraine. This reference can be seen in the paintings of the devils. According to Graca, she began by drawing the devils in her drawings along with other figures, animals, people and metamorphosis, corpses, as is often seen in the war in the Ukraine. At 9 o'clock on a sheet of paper measuring 1.20 by 1.50 centimeters, an untitled drawing in pastel and charcoal. On a red background we see a devil in light clothes wrapped in black and red lines. He has a greenish face that stares at us. The eye on the left is black and outlined in red. The one on the right is just a black stain, as if it had been torn off. He only has the ear on the right. On his head we see two small greenish horns. In this room there are also several stumps from Terra Quente Transmontana, next to the Dauro. According to Graca Mores, a while ago she went to visit a vineyard that she inherited from her mother and saw two piles of vines there. She thought they were wonderful and thought that one day they could be turned into sculpture. To Graca, these stumps have already offered wonderful grapes, and the wine from there is very tasty. She feels happy to have had this experience because the vineyards belong to her family. These pieces that she displays here in room 7 end up being tributes to farmers. At 5 o'clock there are three drawings in charcoal and pastel on the wall in shades of black and brown. Attached to the drawing on the right, a hanging stump. The drawings represent tubercles and very unclear shapes that allow for varied readings. Now go back, take three steps to re-enter room 6. Turn to your right and take seven more steps. You will reach room 1 which gives you access to the stairs or the elevator. Closing words, we now reached the end of our visit. On behalf of the team that helped create and produce this audio described visit, we would like to thank you and hope you enjoyed it. We look forward to your next visit. Before leaving, we would like to ask you to leave us your opinion. To this end, please complete a brief questionnaire available at the center's reception on paper or use the QR code to access it online. Your comments are essential to continue improving audio described visits and future exhibitions. If you would like to send an email to the Polytechnic Institute of Braganza team with your opinion, please send it to culturaparatidosbraganca.pt.